Did you hear it? It wasn't as pronounced this time as it was last time, actually. There's a hush that falls over us this night. It seems like it's something that we've known and we've seen. We've heard this story over and over again because this is the gospel lesson for Christmas Eve every year. It's the same story. Heard again and again and again. If you've been to Christmas Eve service in the past, you've heard the same scripture lesson read again and again. But if you notice, you listen a little bit more intently on this night. You listen a little bit more closely this night. You listen with hopeful expectation. You listen to hear what it is that God is doing because We can hear the hope in this story. But why? I wonder how many mothers gave birth 2,020 years ago on this night. Or 2,015 years ago, depending upon how you want to do your math and when you want to say Jesus was born. How many do you think? Too many? Not too many? I bet more than you would think. Compared to today, not too many. How many people are giving, how many women are giving birth right now? You couldn't say, all over the world. It's The point of that is, why does this one insignificant woman over 2,000 years ago matter enough that we remember her and talk about her 2,000 years later? It's an insignificant person and 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 two insignificant people, a woman and a man who have had to go many miles from their home to travel because the government told them they had to and important people said, we're going to do this registration and we're going to count all of the people and therefore you must go from where you're at to where you came from. And you don't have a choice in this matter. And these people have to get up and move and go to a place that they haven't been in a long time to get rejected by family. And yet today, 2,000 years later, we still talk about this story. Why? Would we have seen it? Would we have even noticed what had happened if it wasn't for the angels that came to the lowly shepherds? Shepherds, who are people who cannot be used as witnesses in court, are one of the first people to see our Savior born. Our modern day... um, the person that would be closest to a shepherd in our modern day understanding, and I apologize if there's any of you that are here, I mean no ill respect, used car salesman would be the appropriate association to a shepherd today. I think you all understand what I mean by that. I mean no, it, no miss ill or miss, no wrong to you if you are a used car salesman. But that would be the interpretation. These are the people who are the first witnesses to Jesus' birth. Why do we remember that? Why do we know that? It's because God is working in and around us everywhere, all day, every day. In the smile you get from a stranger, someone holding a door open for you, the random act of kindness that happens, and God working in and through those things, And if we get so caught up in who we think God is, our own God, and don't allow God to be who God is himself, we're going to miss it. Just like the shepherds would have. Just like all of the world would have. And this one insignificant woman and this one insignificant man go to a town to be registered because the important people in the world tell them they have to be. Because God was working in and through them. 
See, the most important words in our gospel for tonight is not that Jesus was born. It's not about the angels bringing them to us. It is the angels included in the message, but it's not the angels. It's not the shepherds. It's not the fact that Christ was born. It's what the angels say, and it's to each and every one of us right here. Do not be afraid. I am bringing you good news. For to you is born this night to you. Not necessarily the person sitting next to you. To you. If you were the only person on earth, Jesus would have been born for you. Would we see it? Would we see God coming into our own lives? Can we see him enough to allow ourselves to set aside everything that we think we know about who God is and what we, what he wants for us? To actually allow God to come into our lives and clear us out of everything that keeps him from us. Clear out everything that can keep us from the life that is generated for us. Can we allow Christ to come in as he broke in that night, wrapped in cloth, laid in the manger, do you have room in your end to allow Jesus to come in to give you the life that he has to set aside everything that we hold tight to and allow God to come in and shake us loose and give us that grace and mercy that only he can give to light up our lives so that all of the world will see his love and his grace shining through us not because we're doing it but because we've given up and have allowed God to come in. That's what this night is about. About us giving up our lives and allowing this baby laid in a manger to take his place in each and every one of our lives so that his love and his light will continually shine so that his love will be made known to all of the world.